My name is Jeff Oxnard. I am a thoracic oncologist at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and an assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. I'm a clinical investigator. I, I care for lung cancer patients and collect biospecimens, blood and tumor, to better understand the, the clinical biology of lung cancer. The key question I study is drug resistance, and I work with a blood biomarker lab at, at Dana-Farber, the Belfer Center, to study and look for free-floating DNA in these blood specimens as a way of understanding what's happening to the cancer. We've been working for a number of years with droplet digital PCR and have validated an, an approach that allows us to quantify how much mutant DNA is floating in the blood and using this detect key mutations in genes like EGFR, can find patients responding to, to targeted therapies and developing resistance with new resistance mutations like T790M. And so now that we've sort of validated this approach, we're now using it in patient care. And we, we offer this as a clinical test so our patients can try to connect to targeted therapies. We wrote a, a paper last year about when patients develop resistance to an EGFR inhibitor, they may or may not have T790M. If they have T790M, they can get a, a terrific new drug, osimertinib. But to test for T790M, they need a new biopsy. And sick lung cancer patients don't want a new biopsy. And so we've found that we can test the liquid biopsy instead. We can look for this free-floating DNA and using our DDPCR assay, find T7M, get patients on a targeted therapy, and potentially skip the need for an invasive biopsy and more efficiently deliver precision medicine. We have also now been using it to study new resistance mechanisms. And so uh, some of our collaborators uh, were looking at some free-floating DNA and thought they found a new mutation, C797S. And so we used DDPCR to validate this finding. We developed a new assay for C797S and studying 15 patients with resistance to osimertinib found that a portion of them acquired, in addition to T790M, a new EGFR mutation, C797S. Some of them maintained the T790M without C797S, and some of them, interestingly, lost the T790M. They still had their driver mutation, but they didn't have T790M resistance. They, we assume, had some other resistance mechanism. So this is the first paper, really, that used liquid genomics, cell-free DNA, without biopsies to describe resistance to a new drug using really two different assays, next generation sequencing of, pl of plasma DNA and DDPCR of plasma DNA to confirm a finding without needing tumor genomics at all. And so this really Im increases our ability to, to study resistance. The fact is it's easy to collect blood. Uh, not, not all blood has DNA in it, but, but it's much easier to collect a large scale of specimens that allows you to study resistance to a new drug. So the research we're presenting uh, at ACR this year is about an attempt of revisiting that question of more completely understanding resistance to osimertinib. We start with an institutional cohort of about 26 patients who had a biopsy after osimertinib. And in that, we find that, like in our prior plasma work, some of them maintain T790M, some of them lose T790M. And those who maintain T790M, you can find the new EGFR C797S. And in those who lose T790M, using next generation sequencing of the tumor, we find a range of other competing resistance mutations that have emerged. Small cell transformation, MET amplification, BRAF mutations. These are all resistance mechanisms that have previously been described as alternatives to T790M, and we sort of find that they emerge when T790M is suppressed. But we also found a completely new resistance mechanism, an acquired KRAS mutation. And I'm telling you, EGFR and KRAS they don't coexist in lung cancer. It's like the oldest truth in the book. So finding a KRAS mutation in an EGFR mutant lung cancer, it, I was skeptical. How do I prove to myself this is real? I study the plasma. And so I had the serial plasma from this patient. We develop a DDPCR assay for this KRAS Q61 mutation. And there we see it obviously develop, acquiring in the plasma, confirming our finding in the tumor. And I think this idea that plasma and tumor together can work to understand a new truth that DDPCR can validate next generation sequencing is a nice way of, of, of supporting discovery and having more confidence in our findings. The last finding we, we looked at is the clinical behavior depending on your type of resistance. If you have loss of T790M in these 26 patients, they seem to have early resistance, suggesting some kind of heterogeneity and, and early outgrowth of competing clones, versus if you maintain T790M, these patients have later resistance. And so the clinical presentation of a patient might impact your thinking about their biology. If they develop resistance very quickly, look for something competing like a meta amplification. If they develop resistance late, think about maintained EGFR addiction and, and new EGFR dependent resistance. But 26 patients isn't very big. How do we validate this finding? We take 150 patients with plasma, 
from a big clinical trial, and we study their plasma DNA with digital PCR. And using that assay, we, we now, we can find tumor DNA in about 100 of them, and we confirm that it, those who lose T7IM had a short median PFS around five months. Those who maintain T7IM have a longer median PFS around 12 months. And so again, okay, using plasma genomics to validate the tumor finding, we can validate this finding that there are really two clinical behaviors of resistance. And so, how, what how does this impact doctors out there? You know, I, I'm now routinely in my patients with EGFR resistance, checking a blood test, looking for T790M, and using that to decide the next step. Uh, I will say when the blood test is negative, I fall back on tumor testing because the blood test is not perfect in its sensitivity. But in my patients who now have resistance to osimertinib, you have to retest the T7IM. You have to revisit, is their biology changed? Is their biology still the same? And so the fact that T7IM comes and goes means we have to think about how we can reassess this biomarker in our patients, either with liquid biopsy or with biopsy or with both. Uh, and for those clinical trials that are being developed for osimertinib resistance, you know, they want to study T7IM patients who have failed osimertinib. They also need to revisit the biology of the cancer because if they might be getting patients who have lost T7IM and have a range of complex biologies, instead of patients who still have EGFR addicted T7NEM and have a different kind of biology. And so this is a biomarker that I think we're going to be checking again and again for our patients as we try to personalize their treatment strategy.